New details this morning on the Melania Trump story. She's at Walter Reed Medical Center, as you know, recovering from a procedure for what's being described as a benign kidney condition. President Trump just tweeting about her, quote, we'll put it on the screen, our great first lady is doing really well. We'll be leaving hospital in two or three days. Thank you for so much love and support. Um, great news to hear that the first lady is doing better. Let me just, uh, I want to bring in, joining us now, discuss our chief, CNN chief medical correspondent, Dr. Sanjay Gupta, and former Walter Reed urologist, Dr. Greg Bernstein. Welcome to, to both of you to give us some insight into um, what's happening here. Let's put up the, the statement from uh, the first lady's communications director to just give us a little bit more background on what at least the White House is saying about it. Uh, this was released yesterday. This morning, First Lady Melania Trump underwent an embolization procedure to treat a benign kidney condition. The procedure was successful and there were no complications. Mrs. Trump is at Walter Reed National Military Medical Center and will likely remain there for the duration of the week. The First Lady looks forward to a full recovery so she can continue to her work on behalf of children everywhere. Sanjay, start with you. So now, uh, what do we know about what this is, uh, what it's not, and her prognosis? Well, uh, what we know is that the, this embolization procedure uh, is a procedure as opposed to a, a surgery. Uh, surgery is usually when you make an incision in the body. You're actually manipulating the tissue and the organs directly. Think of this more like a, a large IV where you're basically putting that into a blood vessel and then threading a catheter up into the area around where this abnormality in the kidney is. And the goal is to inject some uh, a glue-like substance to basically block the blood vessels from going to that abnormality uh, so that the, it starts to shrink or if it was at risk of bleeding, it lowers the risk of bleeding. So uh, that, that's, that's what it is. It's, it's not, a, not an operation per se. Uh, we also know that um, she's expected to stay in the hospital for several days, which right. is uh, a bit unusual for this sort of thing, but that, that's, that's kind of it. And, and, and that it's benign. It's a benign kidney condition. That's as much as we can take away from, the, uh, from what we've heard. So Dr. Bernstein, I, I guess a couple of points. One, with your background at Walter Reed, what do you know about procedures there that may shed some light on, on why the First Lady will stay there for several more days as the President President indicated. And um, I, I guess the question that comes to mind for me about uh, a, a benign you know, mass in the kidney is uh, w what are potential future complications um, on, uh, for kidney function for one or, or any other potential complications? Well, let me, let me tackle the first question first. Uh, the first question addressed, you know, why Walter Reed, why staying there for a few days? Uh, I think, you know, after an embolization procedure, uh, you know, there is some pain, obviously, with an embolization procedure. What they're doing is they're cutting off the blood supply, which is therefore, you know, cutting off the oxygen to that part of the kidney. And that can have some significant pain associated with it, not only during the procedure, but after the procedure. And there's a, there's a common uh, phenomenon called the post-embolization syndrome, which can be associated with pain and fever and nausea. Uh, which can last for a couple of days after the procedure. Um, and so I think, you know, with uh, the First Lady being, uh, having the av availability to stay at Walter Reed for a couple of days, where they have the best nurses in the world, they have a private uh, a suite there with, uh, with top-notch uh, ancillary support, they can tend to her needs, tend to her pain, tend to her comfort, and make sure that they're, they're, they're watching her, monitoring her uh, or, during the next couple of days, first couple of days after the procedure. The second question you, you asked yeah. about, uh, complications afterwards. So, you know, in, in, in the initial phase, uh, as I referred to, uh, long term, uh, probably just potential for an infection, maybe some potential for post-operative bleeding. They're probably monitoring her, her vital signs and some, some lab work uh, to make sure everything is stable. Uh, Sanjay, your thought on also the, the road ahead for her when, when somebody presents uh, with this kind of condition as they age, um, you know, uh, knowing the importance of our kidneys, uh, what do you look for over time? I think that, you know, uh, given that she's had this, this procedure done, it sounds like they uh, uh, were doing a procedure on a particular part of the kidney. As you know, you have two kidneys. You know, people can live with just one kidney even. So in some cases when, when they're doing these kind of procedures, if they can't complete them successfully, they'll actually remove one of the kidneys. And patients do pretty, pretty well from that. I mean, you can, you can do well with one kidney. It's not an ideal situation uh, because if you ever damage that second kidney or, or you develop some sort of problem with it, that obviously uh, makes it much worse. But in her case, given that she's been able to 
uh, just have this procedure. Her kidney's still in place. Uh, it seems like it probably still functions. I, I wouldn't worry as much about her kidney function long term. I am still curious, though, about this this more prolonged hospitalization. I agree with Dr. Bernstein that, uh, you know, a day maybe in the hospital. I'm just wondering, sometimes these embolization procedures are done in advance of another procedure. I, you know, mm -hmm. don't know if she's having that, that's planned or not coming down the road. But that's still, I think, the big open question mark is what's, what's next? I'm not as much worried about her kidney function, just her hospitalization now. So, Dr. Bernstein, we're not, to make it clear, we're not speculating about Melania Trump particularly. But when you do see these kinds of procedures, as Sanjay says, could it be a precursor to another procedure? What are those procedures? Sure. Uh, you know, again, <clears throat> you're not part of our team. There is the potential that this could be something more serious. Uh, there could be the need for additional procedures down the road. It's really, you know, with the, the little information that we received yesterday, it's really too hard to know. Uh, I don't, I don't want to read in too much into her stay into the hospital as far as that's concerned. I, I think more it's the fact that she, it's a, she's a private person. They have right. the staff there. They have the hospital there. And I think it's, uh, you know, a luxury that she has to be able to stay in the hospital. And, and final point on this, Sanjay, as, as a doctor, but also as a, as a journalist, as we, as we look at the, in the past, uh, first ladies who have had medical procedures, Nancy Reagan, a mastectomy in, in October of 87, Rosalind Carter uh, had a benign lump removed from her breast. Uh, Betty Ford had a procedure as well uh, in the 70s. Um, so not unusual, but at the same time, you can imagine a prolonged stay to avoid you know, the pictures of a return to the White House if you're, if you're not feeling up to walking so well. I mean, there, there could be those reasons why they want to stay in the hospital a little longer. Yeah, I, I, this is a, that's a, it's an unusual, obviously, situation in, in that regard. You're dealing with, a, with the First Lady of the United States, so there's all sorts of, uh, you know, s certain things that go into that. Uh, I, I, I think that that's very fair, and I, as, as Dr. Bernstein pointed out, who, who's worked at, at Walter Reed, this is a place where she can have that privacy. Also, the security uh, within Walter Reed, this is a hospital that's taken care of the first family uh, in the past, obviously. So, um, you know, the, the, the few days in the hospital, I imagine, for her postoperatively should be very comfortable and very well attended. Right. Doctors, thank you so much. We continue to wish our First Lady uh, well and a speedy recovery and uh, get back to uh, the White House soon. Thank you both very much. Thank yeah, you. Thank you. Allison. Okay, now to the sad news from Hollywood. For Superman movie fans, Margot Kidder brought Lois Lane to life. And now those...